across the Atlantic is where we're going to go because on Monday uh, we had former US President Donald Trump in the dock. Well, today it was his daughter Ivanka's turn. She took the stand in her father's $250 million civil fraud trial where she is accused of being inextricably tied to the Trump organisation and was pressed on her father's real net worth. Joining me now live from New Jersey is Fox News contributor Joe Concha. Joe, uh, very warm welcome to the Independent Republican Mike Graham. Thanks for joining us. Um, an Thank incredible you, case, um, an incredible uh, amount of vitriol already has passed between Donald Trump's lawyers and the, and the judge. Well, what happened today, Joe? And Donald Trump himself <laughs> with the judge. The judge had to admonish him uh, this week uh, for going off script, so to speak. So uh, certainly no love lost between the judge, the attorney general, and Donald Trump as far as his case is concerned. But to answer your question, yes, we saw the president's daughter uh, testify today. Uh, she wasn't there as a defendant uh, per se uh, because the statute of limitations had actually ended on any involvement that she may have, have had with the company. Uh, but overall, it, it seems, if we're looking at the macro picture here, as far as what does this mean for Donald Trump as far as his run for the presidency, we've seen two polls out this week in the United States, one from The New York Times, one from CNN, and both show Donald Trump leading Joe Biden in a 2024 matchup quite comfortably. And as a matter of fact, one just completely shook the earth over here in the States uh, from The New York Times, showing that Donald Trump is up in five of six uh, swing states. In other words, the six states that actually decide elections here in this country. And Donald Trump is up by anywhere from 11 points to six points to five points on Joe Biden, despite having 91 felony counts against him, despite being seen in court on a daily basis. You can make the argument that perhaps Democrats and the attorney general here have overplayed their hand as far as these trials are concerned, because believe it or not, Donald Trump actually looks somewhat like a victim, like a martyr of a weaponized justice system looking to take out a candidate before a presidential election. And the polls just keep showing Trump going up and Biden going down. It is quite remarkable to witness. It really is. And I know Biden uh, is said to have got a bit of a boost with some elections that were held in the last sort of 24 hours, but that's kind of still difficult to judge as to whether that's a long-term um, win for him, isn't it? And the thing about Donald Trump is that he does look like a victim because most of these charges, most of these felony counts are just BS, aren't they? Many of them are dreamed up by uh, political enemies. Many of them are suggesting, for example, that Mar-a-Lago uh, is only worth 18 million. Trump supporters say, well, that's mm -hmm. ridiculous. I mean, obviously, the place could be worth a lot more than that. And to, to, for those of us who've ever bought and sold houses, you know, the place is worth whatever somebody wants to pay for it. Well, that's precisely right. I was in Palm Beach recently where Mar-a-Lago is, and the tennis court at Mar-a-Lago is probably worth... $18 million. I mean, <laughs> it, properties there, when you look at other properties, which are far smaller, obviously where a former president, uh, if he were to sell it, uh, it hasn't lived before, uh, oceanfront property, you're, you're talking about this has to be worth, when you look at comps or comparables, other properties that are similar to Mar-a-Lago, $100, $150 million, that is not an exaggeration, you go look it up online, uh, and instead now you have the attorney general saying that, no, 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 we think it's worth $18 million and you overvalued that property. So I don't think this is resonating with the American public. Again, when I go back to the polls and seeing Donald Trump only going up in these situations, and again, you could call this election interference because we've never seen this before. Somebody running for president and then not one, but four trials coming up before that election happens. And in the case of Donald Trump, by the way, he has been in the public eye, particularly in the New York tabloids, going all the way back to the 1980s. And he will say, We're, you're not electing a, a priest, you're electing a president. In other words, it's baked into the cake yeah. that Donald Trump isn't the guy who's going to be running your kid's Boy Scout troop anytime soon. He's right. a guy who tries to get things done when it comes to the border, when it comes to the economy, when it comes to crime, when it comes to foreign policy. And if you could separate the person from the policies, then Donald Trump's in a very strong position right now, given where the United States is on inflation, crime, education, the border, and obviously the world is as unstable as we've seen it yeah. in decades. Well, that's the thing. And I mean, tragically, I'm old enough to remember Donald Trump in the 80s because I was working in New York at the time. Um, and, and I know all of the stories that some of which he, he dreamed up himself, some of the stories that he used to give to page six of the New York Post and all of that stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, who could look at any president as well, by the way, um, and, and say that they were saints? Because I can't think of one. I don't think they can go... You can go all the way back to Jimmy Carter, you know, who said he had lust in his heart and said that, you know, uh, he was just like everybody else. You can't really, surely, expect in this day and age a president to be a saint. 
particularly when you look at the current president right now, right, yeah. in, in Joe Biden. And you, you see these deals that his son made overseas in places like Ukraine, where yeah. the United States keeps giving billions of dollars to without even checking, hey, where's that money going right. exactly? And Hunter Biden obviously had no no experience as far as working at an energy company, yet he's getting paid millions. The Biden family, by extension, is getting paid millions, also by Chinese companies as well, out of Russia, out of Romania, pick a country over across the pond, and the Bidens probably profited from it. So Joe Biden can no, no longer play that card that he did in 2020, which is, I'm a good guy, that's a bad guy, I'm going to bring the country back to normalcy and decency. Joe Biden doesn't have that card to play anymore. No. And just to go back to Ivanka's appearance today, she looks very um, sedate. She looks very much on top of, uh, of the situation. Uh, she looks very elegant. Uh, she basically didn't seemingly put her foot wrong. Um, was her appearance a plus for, for, for her father today, do you think? I think it depends on how you vote, right? So if you're a fan of the president, then you say, wow, boy, she looks great and she was very composed and didn't make any mistakes. Uh, if you're not a fan of the president, then you say, oh, boy, the Trump family, the, the kids, everybody's corrupt. And look at that. Now she's even in a courtroom right now. I guess it just all depends on your perspective and how you voted in 2020 and 2016. Yeah. I mean, are you surprised that this is what America has become, electorally, that you're it's so divided? that you've basically got uh, a guy like Donald Trump, um, regardless of what you may think of him, um, who has been in power once, is likely at the moment, from what you're saying anyway, uh, to get back into the White House, up against a man yeah. um, who has trouble uh, seemingly remembering where he is and, and what he's talking about. And that's Joe Biden's biggest problem right yeah. now, that it's not like Joe Biden's like a fine wine, where he's going to get better with age as he goes into his 82nd birthday, his 83rd birthday. If Joe Biden wins re-election, he'll be 86 in the Oval Office. We've seen what the 79 and 80-year-old version mm. looks of Joe Biden, and it just appears to be that he's only deteriorating. And then on top of that, even if you take age out of it, all the spending has led to inflation still being too high for Americans. All the energy independence that we once had under Trump is now gone. We're depending on the Saudis, basically, for our oil. Uh, that has led to gas prices being at an all-time high. Mm. Crime is out of control in major American cities. Education scores are at a 30-year low. And obviously, we see what's happening with Ukraine and in Israel. We're now fighting two proxy wars when, under Trump, whether you say it's fair or not, he had two things going for him. It was peace and it was prosperity. And that's the things that Americans value most if you put the personalities and age aside. Yeah, exactly right. And it is a very, very strange country. As I say, I lived there in the, in the 80s. I lived there for about 10 years. And, and it was Reagan's time and, um, you know, the white sepulchre on the hill and all of that. And I just, you know, I don't recognise the country that, that I have so much love for because it seems to be so polarised. As you say, the, the Democrat-run cities are, are horrendous now. Even New York City, uh, my, my, the place where I used to call my second home, is no longer a place that I want to go. I lived on the Upper West Side in Manhattan during the Giuliani years yeah. uh, and lived near New York in a place called Hoboken, New Jersey, during know, the Bloomberg well. years. And you never, ever thought when you're out in the city at 2 a.m. with your friends that you ever were in danger. It right. felt like such a safe, secure place. It yeah. is not that city anymore. You're exactly right about that. But overall, the American media has not done any favors as far as uniting the country or at least getting truth out there. It, it just seems that yeah. it's all about division and fear. So if you're a CNN and MSNBC, it's not just Republican policies are bad, Republicans are bad. And the New York Times, Washington Post, down the line, it seems like it's us versus, versus them yeah. instead of truth versus fiction. And perhaps that's why, in addition to social media not helping things very much, throwing basically kerosene on an already blazing wildfire, uh, that, I think that's led a lot to the division that we're seeing right yeah, now, media absolutely. and social media. Absolutely. Joe, great to see you. Great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. We must do it again soon. Joe Concha there uh, from Fox News uh, reporting into us from New Jersey.